SpaceX continues to push forward with its Starship program, making significant strides toward the next flight test, despite the challenges encountered during Flight 7. Also, notable progress is being made on the second launch pad at Starbase. Let's take a closer look at these exciting developments. While the investigation into the Flight 7 anomaly continues, preparations for Flight 8 are moving forward rapidly at Starbase. The vehicles assigned for this mission, Starship 34 and Booster 15, have successfully completed cryogenic proof testing and are now being prepared for static fire tests. Over the past week, teams have begun installing Raptor engines on Ship 34 inside Mega Bay 2, signaling that the vehicle is nearing readiness for static fire testing. This test will be conducted at the Massey's test site, where SpaceX validates engine performance before flight. Meanwhile, Booster 15 is also undergoing pre-static fire preparations inside the Mega Bay. Installation of the grid fins has begun, and there are indications that the booster may have already started receiving its Raptor engines. Once the ongoing post-Flight 7 inspections, maintenance, and repairs at the launch pad are complete, Booster 15 will be placed on the orbital launch mount for its engine testing. Although Elon Musk has expressed confidence that SpaceX will be ready for Flight 8 as early as February, the actual launch date hinges on the FAA completing its investigation into the Flight 7 anomaly. Currently, the Starship fleet remains grounded. The FAA is conducting a thorough review of the Flight 7 incidents to identify the root cause of the anomaly and formulate corrective measures. SpaceX must address these recommendations, which may involve design adjustments, procedural changes, or additional safety measures before receiving approval to proceed with Flight 8. Considering the fact that the FAA said debris fell outside the hazard zones after the explosion, and flights had to be diverted, there are chances that the investigation will take longer to complete. More details on this matter are expected to emerge in the coming weeks. SpaceX's second orbital launch pad at Starbase has advanced significantly following Flight 7. This past week, Tower 2 received its chopstick arm assembly, marking a major milestone in its development. Let's take a closer look at the step-by-step -step installation process. After completing the necessary preparations and pre-installation of essential components at the Sanchez site, both the carriage and the chopstick arms were transported to the launch site approximately two weeks ago. Since then, teams worked on pre-integration tasks to ensure a smooth assembly and installation of the arms on the launch tower. The first step involved lifting the carriage and placing it atop an assembly jig. The carriage serves as the backbone of the system, responsible for moving the chopstick arms along the height of the tower and positioning them for key operations such as vehicle stacking, destacking, and booster catching maneuvers. After the carriage was secured, the two chopstick arms were lifted one at a time using a crane and carefully placed onto the assembly jig. The arms were then precisely aligned and brought closer to the carriage for integration. Finally, the arms were bolted to the carriage, and a central kingpin was inserted to act as the central locking mechanism, securing the chopstick arms to the carriage. Following the structural assembly, teams spent several hours reinforcing the system and installing key subsystems, including hydraulic actuators, electrical wiring, and control interfaces. These components enable precise movement and automation of the chopstick mechanism. Meanwhile, other elements, such as landing rails, guide pistons, and bumper pads, were pre-installed on the arms before their transportation to the launch site. They assist in controlled motion, impact absorption, and load distribution during rocket capture. Once the assembly was fully secured and all fittings were verified, teams prepared to lift the entire carriage chopstick structure onto the launch tower. The crane carefully lifted the system off the assembly jig, rotated it for proper alignment, and then gradually positioned it onto the tower structure. To integrate the system with the tower, engineers guided a carriage on to pre-installed roller skates along the tower's vertical rails. These 12 precision-mounted skates, arranged in paired sets, are equipped with specialized wheels that allow smooth and controlled movement of the carriage up and down the tower. After verifying alignment, the carriage was firmly secured to the skates, ensuring unrestricted mobility. With the carriage properly mounted, the arms were carefully lowered into their bottom rest position, and the crane was detached. At this stage, the arms were fully secured on the tower but not yet operational. Teams are now working on the final integration phase, which involves connecting the draw work system, the primary hoisting mechanism that enables vertical movement of the chopsticks. Additionally, hydraulic and electrical connections between the tower and the arm carriage system are being finalized. Once power is supplied and control systems are activated, the arms will be fully functional. Before the chopsticks are used in actual operations, SpaceX will conduct a series of validation tests. These will include several arm movements, including opening and closing cycles to verify the hinge movement and synchronization. 
The arms will also be moved to the topmost position, tested several times, and lowered to ensure proper vertical mobility. To assess structural integrity and load handling capability, engineers are expected to perform load tests using water bags. These tests simulate the forces the arms will endure during rocket stacking and catching, ensuring the system is robust enough to withstand the stresses encountered during these procedures. Notably, one key difference between the Pad B arms and those at Pad A is the reduction in arms length by approximately 30%. This design change appears to be motivated by several factors, including lessons learned from earlier tests and operational considerations. One key issue encountered during the initial tests at Pad A was excessive vibration, which posed a risk to the precision needed for catching the booster and upper stage of the Starship. Shortening the arms helps mitigate these vibrations, reducing structural loads and improving mechanical response times. Additionally, the reduced length enhances the efficiency of control algorithms, enabling faster and more accurate positioning during booster retrieval. This arm design modification reflects SpaceX's continuous effort to refine the system based on past experiences, ensuring more efficient, precise, and reliable operations for future missions. In parallel with the works to bring the arms into operation, work on the Pad B flame trench is also progressing well. Excavation for the trench is proceeding smoothly, and teams are simultaneously working on installing the necessary pipes and conduits that will supply both propellants and electrical power to the pad. To support Pad B's operational needs, the existing tank farm is being expanded by adding new propellant storage tanks, pumps, heat exchangers, and other associated components. Recently, several new storage tanks were spotted at the port of Brownsville, being prepared for transport to Starbase. While some of these tanks resemble the horizontal storage tanks currently in use at Starbase, others have notable design changes. Some are smaller and come with pre-attached pipe extensions, likely for fill, vent, or drain connections which will later connect to larger transfer lines. Other tanks feature a more complex design, with an extensive network of pre-installed pipes, valves, and flanges, indicating they are nearly ready for direct integration into the fueling system. These varying tank designs reflect a modular and scalable approach to Starbase's propellant infrastructure, which will enable efficient storage, conditioning, and rapid refueling for future missions on both launch pads. The exact placement of these new tanks at the launch site will become clearer in the coming days. Meanwhile, at the Sanchez site, the construction of the Pad B launch mount is making steady progress. Welding operations continue to secure the individual components of the mount, while plumbing work within the structure is also advancing. One of the key components being installed is the water manifold, which will direct water from the main delivery pipes to various locations on the top deck. From there, the water will be discharged to cool the launch mount, safeguarding it from the intense thermal conditions generated during rocket launches. Several major installations are still pending for the launch mount, including the booster hold down clamps and the 20 quick disconnect mechanisms that supply gases to spin start the outer 20 engines of the booster. The launch mount will also feature a flame diverter beneath it, designed to redirect exhaust gases generated by the booster engines during ignition. This diversion helps protect the surrounding infrastructure from the intense thermal and acoustic effects produced during the launch sequence. The flame diverter will feature a double bucket configuration, with its components currently being pre-assembled at the Sanchez site. The operation of this diverter will be similar to that of the single bucket design used during static fire testing at the Massey test facility. The diverter's structure will consist of a robust steel framework made up of individual pipes that carry water through internal channels. As exhaust gases are diverted, water will be sprayed through small perforations in the pipes, creating an effective barrier that absorbs both heat and noise during engine ignition. The main water supply manifolds, responsible for distributing water to the diverter's spray channels, have already been installed on the framework. Pre-assembly of the diverter is expected to continue progressing in the coming days. Once the Pad B flame trench is complete, the launch mount, along with the flame diverter system, will be installed and integrated. Given the current pace of progress, Pad B is expected to be fully operational by mid-2025, ready to support future launches. Turning our attention to the production site, the assembly of Starship 35 is nearing completion inside Megabay 2. The oxygen tank section of the ship has recently been integrated with the previously stacked sections. Next, the aft dome section will be stacked, followed by the installation of the aft flaps, electrical and hydraulic systems, and other essential components. The engines will be the final addition to the vehicle. Starship 35 is scheduled for Flight 9 and will be paired with Booster 16, which has already been fully stacked. Preparations are now in progress for the cryo-proof testing of Booster 16. 
Meanwhile, sections for future Starship and booster variants are also under construction at the production site. These parts are expected to be completed and stacked in the coming weeks and months, ensuring continued progress toward upcoming missions. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission has unveiled groundbreaking insights from the samples collected from asteroid Bennu, shedding light on the potential origins of life on Earth. Launched in September 2016, OSIRIS-REx aimed to study asteroid Bennu to gain a deeper understanding of the solar system's formation and assess any potential impact threats to Earth. After a journey spanning over two years, the spacecraft reached Bennu in December 2018. It then spent the next two years orbiting the asteroid, conducting extensive studies to identify a suitable site for sample collection. In October 2020, OSIRIS-REx successfully touched down on Bennu, collecting approximately 121 grams of material, marking NASA's first successful asteroid sample collection. The spacecraft departed Bennu in May 2021 and returned the sample capsule to Earth in September 2023, landing in Utah's desert. The samples were then transported to NASA's Johnson Space Center for detailed analysis. On January 29, NASA announced significant discoveries from the Bennu samples, unveiling findings regarding the essential ingredients for life. A total of 33 amino acids were identified in the Bennu aggregates, which are the building blocks for proteins, fundamental for cellular structure and function. Notably, 14 of the 20 standard amino acids used by life on Earth were present in the samples. Interestingly, while life on Earth predominantly uses left-handed amino acids, the Bennu samples contained an equal mixture of left- and right-handed versions. This raises questions about how early life on Earth may have originated from a racemic mixture before evolving towards a preference for left-handed amino acids. Furthermore, all five nucleobases that constitute the building blocks of DNA and RNA were detected in the samples. These molecules store and transmit genetic information, essential for the replication and evolution of life. This marks the first instance of these genetic components being identified in extraterrestrial material collected by a spacecraft. The analysis also revealed high levels of ammonia and other nitrogen-rich organic compounds. The discovery of amino acids and nucleobases in the Bennu samples suggests that the fundamental building blocks of life are not unique to Earth, but may be widespread across the solar system and beyond. These findings have profound implications for astrobiology, particularly in the search for extraterrestrial life. Further investigations of the samples are planned to delve deeper into these findings. Scientists aim to explore how these organic molecules could interact under various conditions that mimic early planetary environments. The Indian Space Research Organization achieved a significant milestone with the successful launch of the NVS-02 navigation satellite on January 29 atop a GSLV rocket. This mission marked ISRO's 100th launch from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota, India's primary space part, and also served as the agency's first mission of 2025. The launch sequence unfolded flawlessly, with all stage separations executed as planned, guiding the rocket along its intended trajectory. Ultimately, the rocket's upper stage deployed the satellite into a geosynchronous transfer orbit at an altitude of approximately 36,000 kilometers and an inclination of nearly 21 degrees to the equator. The NVS-02 satellite, weighing 2,250 kilograms, is part of navigation with Indian Constellation, or NAVIC, India's independent regional navigation satellite system. NAVIC is designed to provide accurate position, velocity, and timing services to users within India and extending about 1,500 kilometers beyond its borders. Unlike global navigation systems like GPS, NAVIC focuses on regional coverage and is fully independent of foreign systems. NAVIC ensures precise navigation for terrestrial, aerial, and maritime users, especially in urban areas where GPS signals may be obstructed. It plays a crucial role in defense, offering secure positioning for military operations, while also aiding disaster management with real-time location data. The Indian Navigational Satellite Program began with its maiden launch in July 2013, and currently, there are five satellites operational in this constellation. ISRO plans to launch several more NAVIC satellites in the coming years to expand the constellation, ensure service continuity, and further enhance India's navigation capabilities. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.